The Therizinosaurus, meaning scythe lizard, is a genus of Therizinosaurid that lived in Asia during the late Cretaceous period, about 70 million years ago, in what is now known as the Nemet Formation. The genus includes only one species, Therizinosaurus coloniformis. The first fossils of this dinosaur were discovered in 1948 during a Mongolian expedition in the Gobi Desert and were later described by Evgeny Maliev in 1954. The Therizinosaurus is primarily known from a few bones, including large unguals, claw bones, that inspired the name of the genus, along with later discoveries between the 1960s and 1980s that included parts of the forelimbs and hindlimbs. Like other members of its group, it was probably a slow-moving animal, with a long neck and a bulky body adapted for feeding. It possessed a beak and a wide trunk, likely to facilitate the digestion of plants. Its forelimbs were particularly strong and had three fingers, with unguals that, unlike those of other relatives, were elongated and rigid, curving only at the tips. The Therizinosaurus had the largest manual claws ever recorded in any terrestrial animal, measuring over 50 centimeters in length. Its hind limbs ended in four functional toes that supported its weight, differing from other theropods, where the first toe was reduced, resembling more the sauropodomorphs, a distantly related group. It was one of the last and largest members of the Therizinosaurs, previously known as Sengusauria. During and after its description in 1954, Therizinosaurus was subject to taxonomic confusion due to the lack of complete fossils and close relatives at the time. Malayev believed the remains belonged to a large turtle-like reptile and even named a new family, Therizinosauridae, for the genus. Over time, with the discovery of more complete relatives, it was thought that Therizinosaurus could be a type of late Cretaceous sauropodomorph, or even a transitional ornithischian. However, after many debates, it is now recognized as belonging to the theropods, more specifically the Menoraptorans. Most current analyses place Therizinosaurus within the family Therizinosaurs. The unusual arms and body anatomy of Therizinosaurus, inferred from its relatives, are often cited as examples of convergent evolution with the calico theories and other herbivorous mammals, suggesting it had similar dietary habits. The elongated claws on its hands were more useful for pulling vegetation than for defense or attack due to their fragility, although they may have been used for intimidation. Its arms were also very resistant to mechanical stress, indicating intensive use of the limbs. Additionally, its great height likely allowed it to access foliage that other herbivores could not reach, reducing competition for food while avoiding predators like Tarbosaurus. In 1948, Several Mongolian paleontological expeditions organized by the USSR Academy of Sciences were conducted in the Nemet Formation, located in the Gobi Desert, with the primary goal of discovering new fossils. These expeditions uncovered various dinosaur and turtle fossils in the type locality of Nemet, also known as the Nemet Valley, but the most notable finds were three partial manual claw bones of significant size. These unguals were unearthed in a subdivision of the Nemate locality called Quarry 5, near the skeleton of a large theropod and associated with other elements such as a metacarpal fragment and several rib fragments. These fossils were catalogued with the specimen number P1N551-483 and later described by Russian paleontologist Evgeny Maliev in 1954. Maliev used these fossils to name the new genus and type species Therizinosaurus keloniformis which became the holotype specimen. The name of the genus, Therizinosaurus, comes from the Greek therizo, therizo meaning scythe, to reap or to cut, and sauros, sauros meaning lizard, referencing the large manual claws. The species name, Chiloniformis, is derived from the Greek chelone, chelone meaning turtle, and the Latin formis, as it was believed that the fossils belonged to a turtle-like reptile. Maliev also created a new family for this enigmatic taxon, Therizinosauridae. At the time, little was known about Therizinosaurus, and Maliev suggested that the specimen PIN 551-483 belonged to a large turtle-like reptile about four and a half meters long, which used its enormous claws to collect marine algae. Although the exact nature of the animal to which these fossils belonged was not clear, in the 1970s, Russian paleontologist Anatoly K. Rozhdestvensky 
was one of the first to suggest that Therizinosaurus was a theropod, rather than a turtle. He compared the Chilantosaurus with the holotypic unguals of Therizinosaurus, proposing that these claws belong to a carnivorous dinosaur, interpreting Therizinosaurus as a theropod. Rojdestvensky also illustrated the three holotypic unguals and reclassified the metacarpal fragment as a metatarsal bone. For Manoraptorans, Therizinosaurus reached impressive sizes, estimated between 9 and 10 meters in length, over 2 meters in hip height, 4 to 5 meters in head height, and weighing between 5 to 6 tons. The largest Therizinosaurus specimens could measure 11 meters in length, 2.5 meters in hip height, 6 meters in head height, and could weigh 7 to 8 tons. These dimensions make it the largest known Therizinosaur and the largest Manoraptoran ever recorded. Alongside the contemporary Ornithomimosaur Danocaris, it was the largest Manoraptoriform. Although the remains of Therizinosaurus are relatively incomplete, it is possible to infer its physical characteristics based on more complete and related Therizinosaurs. Like other members of its family, Therizinosaurus had a proportionally small skull on top of a long neck, bipedal locomotion, a large belly for processing vegetation, and sparse plumage. Other likely features include a heavily pneumatized, air-filled vertebral column and a robust retroverted pelvis. In 2010, Center and James used equations based on the length of the hind limbs to predict the total leg length in Therizinosaurus and Dinocaris. They concluded that an average Therizinosaurus would have hind limbs approximately three meters long. More recently, Mike Taylor and Matt Weddle suggested that the complete neck would be two and nine-tenths times the length of the humerus which measured 76 centimeters, resulting in a neck of two meters and two tenths in length, based on comparisons with the cervical vertebrae series of Nanshungosaurus. The most notable feature of Therizinosaurus was the presence of giant claws on each of the three fingers of its hands. While large claws are common among Therizinosaurs, those of Therizinosaurus were particularly massive and rigid, considered the largest ever known in any terrestrial animal. The manual claws of Therizinosaurus were extremely large and long, measuring around 52 centimeters in length. Unlike other Therizinosaurs, these claws were quite straight, laterally flattened, and had pronounced curvatures only at the tips, a unique characteristic of Therizinosaurus. The lower tubercle, where the flexor tendons attached to the claw, was thick and robust, suggesting a significant pad in life. The articular surface connecting to the anterior phalanx was slightly concave and divided by a central crest. Regarding the hind limbs, Therizinosaurus had a short, robust tibia with a very wide distal end. The metatarsus was robust and short, with a tetradactyl condition, meaning it had four functional toes supporting its weight. The fifth metatarsal was a greatly reduced bone located on the lateral side of the metatarsus and was non-functional. Unlike most other theropods, the first toe of Therizinosaurus was functional and supported weight, although it was shorter. The second and third toes were of the same length, while the fourth was thinner and slightly smaller. The claws on the feet were laterally flattened and likely sharp. The morphology of the feet of Therizinosaurus and other Therizinosaurs was unique, as most theropods had three-toed feet, where the first toe was reduced and did not contact the ground. The classification of Therizinosaurus has undergone numerous revisions over the years. Since then, the discovery of more complete fossils, such as those of Senyosaurus and Ehrlichosaurus, has helped clarify the taxonomic relationships of these dinosaurs. Therizinosaurus was gradually recognized as a Manoraptoran theropod, with characteristics that distinguished it from other groups. The discovery of Alxosaurus in 1993 provided additional evidence linking Therizinosaurs to Manoraptorans, challenging the previous idea that these animals were sauropodomorphs. In 1993, Dale A. Russell and Donald E. Russell studied Therizinosaurus and Chalicotherium, noting similarities in their respective anatomies despite belonging to different groups. Both genera had large, well-developed, and relatively strong arms. Their pelvic girdles were robust and suited for a sitting posture and the structure of the hind limbs, especially the feet, was sturdy and short. They interpreted these adaptations as an example of convergent evolution, a situation where organisms develop similar traits without being directly related, between extinct genera of mammals and dinosaurs. Furthermore, 
This body plan is found to some extent in modern gorillas. Since animals with this body configuration are recognized as herbivores, researchers suggested that Therizinosaurus had a similar lifestyle. Russell and Russell reconstructed the feeding behavior of Therizinosaurus, suggesting that it could sit while feeding on foliage from large bushes and trees. The vegetation would be collected with its hands, an action facilitated by its long neck, which reduced the need for significant force. Its arms were long enough to touch the ground in certain positions, potentially helping the dinosaur rise from a lying position. When bipedal, the Rhizinosaurus could reach even higher vegetation, supported by its short, robust feet. While Calicotherium was better adapted for pulling branches, the Rhizinosaurus was more efficient at pushing through large amounts of foliage due to its long claws. Additionally, the Rhizinosaurus may have had less precision in its movements compared to Calicotherium, which possessed more developed cognitive, dental, and muscular capabilities. In 2018, Anthony R. Fiorillo and collaborators suggested that Therizinosaurus had a reduced bite force, useful for cutting vegetation or foraging, based on relatives like Ehrlichosaurus and Segnosaurus. In the 1970s, Raj Destvensky re-examined the claws and suggested a possible specialized function for breaking into termite mounds or a frugivorous diet. In 1976, Barsbold proposed that the unusual claws of Therizinosaurus could have been used for impaling or digging in soft ground, but he also noted the fragility of the claws upon impact. By 1995, Nessoff suggested that the elongated claws were used for defense against predators and that young individuals might have used them for arboreal locomotion, similar to modern sloths or young tree climbing animals. In 2014, Lautenschlager tested the function of various Therizinosaur claws through digital simulations. Three different functional scenarios were simulated for each type of claw, with a force of 400 newtons applied in each case. Scratching, digging, grasping and pulling, and piercing. While the short claws of Alxosaurus showed low stress levels, the curved and elongated claws of Falcarius, Nothronicus, and Therizinosaurus exhibited higher stress levels. In the scratching-digging scenario, some of the highest stress, deformation, and strain magnitudes were recorded. The grasping and pulling scenario resulted in lower stress magnitudes, while the piercing scenario exhibited even less. Overall stress was most pronounced in the unusual claws of Therizinosaurus, suggesting a high degree of specialization. Lautenschlager noted that the more curved and elongated claws of some Therizinosaurs were not functional for digging, indicating that this was not their primary purpose. Although digging behavior has been observed in various dinosaur species, the large size of Therizinosaurus makes it unlikely that it dug burrows. However, it is possible that it used its foot claws for more general digging, as the feathers on its arms would likely hinder this function. Thus, it is more plausible that Therizinosaurus utilized its hands in a grasping and pulling motion to bring vegetation within reach. Lautenschlager could not confirm or dismiss the possibility that the hand claws were used for defense, intraspecific competition, stabilization while gripping tree trunks, sexual dimorphism, or during mating, due to a lack of additional fossils. He clarified that there is no evidence that the long claws of Therizinosaurus were used for active defense or attack, but they might have served an intimidating role when facing threats. In 2018, Scott A. Lee and Zachary Richards, based on bending resistance measurements of humeri from various dinosaurs, discovered that the humeri of carnosaurs, therizinosaurs, and tyrannosaurs were relatively resistant to stress. This greater ability to withstand stress supports the idea that therizinosaurus and other therizinosaurs utilize their arms robustly, generating considerable forces. Unlike agile ornithomimosaurs, which evaded predators through speed, Therizinosaurus and its relatives relied on their arms and claws to deal with threats, as they were relatively slow runners. In 2023, a study conducted by Chin, Rayfield, Benton, and others on the function of claws in Therizinosaurus and Alvarosaurids suggested that the forelimb claws of Therizinosaurus had no clear mechanical function, possibly being merely ornamental, resulting from exaggerated growth associated with increased body size. The fossils of Therizinosaurus were found in the famous Nemet Formation in the Gobi Desert. 
Although this formation has never been radiometrically dated due to the absence of datable volcanic rocks, vertebrate fossils indicate that it is from the early Maastrichtian stage, about 70 million years ago. The Nemet formation is divided into three informal layers. The lower layer consists mainly of fluvial sediments, while the middle and upper layers consist of alluvial plains, swamp sediments, lakes, and rivers. The environments inhabited by Therizinosaurus have been determined based on the sedimentation of the formation, preserved carbon levels in the dental enamel of many herbivorous dinosaurs, and abundant petrified wood. The environment included large, meandering rivers and closed forests of Araucaria, supporting a rich diversity of herbivorous dinosaurs like Therizinosaurus. The climate was relatively temperate, with average annual temperatures between 7.5 and 8.7 degrees Celsius, characterized by monsoons, cold and dry winters, and hot and rainy summers. The average annual precipitation varied between 775 and 835 millimeters with significant seasonal fluctuations. The humid environments of the Nemate Formation may have acted as an oasis, attracting oviraptorids from neighboring arid regions, such as the Barun Goyot Formation, as evidenced by the presence of Nemegtomaya in both formations. It was previously proposed that the Nemate Formation might resemble the modern Okavango Delta, which is also characterized by mesic areas, meaning well irrigated. Life reconstruction includes a pair of Therizinosaurus accompanied by a small group of Prenocephal and Atosaurus. The paleofauna of the Nemet formation was varied and rich, containing other dinosaurs such as the Alvarosaurus mononychus and Nemectonychus, the Dromaeosaurus Atosaurus and Xanabazar, the Ornithomimosaurus Ansarimimus and Gallimimus, the Ovaraptorosaurus Avimimus, Gigantoraptor, Rinchenia, and Elmosaurus the Tyrannosaurids Electrosaurus, Aliorimus, and possibly Bagaratan, the Ankylosaurids Syachania and Tarchia, as well as the Pachycephalosaurs Homolocephaly and Prinocephaly. The megafauna of Nemect included the Ornithomimosaur Dinocaris, the Hadrosaurids Barsboldia and Sorolophus, the Titanosaurs Nemectosaurus and Opisthocoelacaudia, and the apex predator Tarbosaurus. Additional paleofauna included birds like Judenornis and Teviornis, freshwater ostracodes in various areas, fish, terrestrial and aquatic turtles like Mongoloculus and Nemectomies, as well as the crocodilian peralligator. The sediments where Therizinosaurus fossils were found indicate that it likely preferred foraging in areas close to rivers. Due to its remarkable height and habit of feeding at great heights, Therizinosaurus was one of the largest dinosaurs in the Nemet Formation fauna. It is likely that it faced little competition from other herbivores for food, although there may have been niche partitioning with titanosaurs, also long-necked dinosaurs, present in the formation. If it were indeed a herbivore, Therizinosaurus would have competed for resources with other contemporary herbivores like Sorolophus. Small predators, such as Dromaeosaurids and Trudontids, would not have posed a significant threat to Therizinosaurus. The only similarly sized predator was Tarbosaurus. Due to the elevated height of Therizinosaurus, even a large Tarbosaurus would likely only be able to bite the thighs or belly of a standing adult Therizinosaurus. Its elongated claws could have been useful for defending against or intimidating predators in such circumstances. There is also the possibility that Therizinosaurus competed for other resources with Dinocaris, Sorolophus, Nemectosaurus, and Opisthocoelacaudia. Thus, Therizinosaurus, one of the most fascinating and enigmatic members of the Therizinosaurus group, concludes its chapter in the history of dinosaurs. From a mistaken identification as an aquatic reptile to its definitive classification among theropods, it exemplifies how science is in constant evolution and how each new discovery can transform our understanding of the past. With its immense claws and likely herbivorous behavior, it stands out as an example of the astonishing diversity that dinosaurs achieved, adapting to a variety of ecological niches. Therizinosaurus was not just a giant among herbivores, but also a living lesson that nature always finds unique ways to shape its creatures. In the end, that's what the study of paleontology reminds us. The history of life on Earth is full of mysteries, but also extraordinary answers waiting to be discovered. Until the next video.